Good morning, YouTube friends. So today is Friday, which means it is podcast day. So I am getting ready to walk out to the barn to feed the horses. If you haven't been here before, welcome. My name is Karina, and I'm coming to you from the Pacific Northwest. Uh, this podcast is about um, my horsemanship journey and my knitting projects. I live here with my partner, our two kitties, and the two horses that I'm going out to feed. It is quite a lovely fall morning. It is not quite 7 a.m. So November 8th, um, the time change was last weekend. You might be able to see in the distance the sun rising. I have a rock in my boot, so pardon me. i balance on one foot. <clears throat> Hopefully that took care of it. Sorry for all the jiggling around. So typically what happens um, is that I just kind of talk about what, um, I just kind of talk about the week in a little bit and maybe my plans for the weekend. And then um, in a later segment, I talk about my knitting projects. Um, I have an almost finished object, which I may share today um, because it's a gift and once they're finished, I'm going to hand them off. Um, can you see the color? These are just all the cedar needles on the ground and the blueberries that have turned. I love fall. Um, Fall can be very difficult for some people here in the Pacific Northwest. We are at the 48th parallel, which is very close to Canada, and it can be quite dark. However, I tend to think of this part of the world as having seasons of light, and I love it. Yes, that is our um, field mower that is still here. I'm not sure when we're going to get to that. There isn't any field mowing going on right now, so uh, probably not an urgency. It'd be nice to get it out of the driveway though, ducking under the fence. Yesterday I rode Odin. Um, Ryan Rose Horsemanship has a monthly challenge for his patrons, and it was one I felt like I could handle, and also it was a beautiful uh, fall day yesterday, so I took a lunch break and Road Odin. There he is, the handsome fella. And there's Braggy, the other handsome fella. I also worked with Braggy a little bit too. My trainer's coming today to work with Braggy on trailer training. So hopefully some of the things that I did with him yesterday will support that. So I'm going to get to feeding. I'll see you in the next segment. Hello, YouTube friends. Welcome to, I'm just going to say, uh, chapter one of the knitting portion of my podcast. Uh, I want to share with you what I am wearing. This is the Love Note sweater. You re might remember this. It was a very popular pattern a few years ago. Um, I think it's Tin Can Knits is the designer. So it's where you hold a skein of fingering weight and a skein of um, mohair together. So a lace weight yarn and it makes it very warm and very soft. I am, however, a little bit allergic to mohair. Um, so I always have to wear like a shirt underneath. Um, so the fingering weight is I used was this color and the mohair was more of kind of a rust color. So together it made this color, which I think is very autumnal. Love that. Um, the other thing that I am wearing of knitwear objects um, are these socks. So these socks are, I think they're the quilted, scrappy quilted socks maybe by Kay Jones. I used um, Polka Dot Creek, um, their blanket club used, uh, it comes with nine colors and um, I will say that I did not uh, have matching socks, so I can show you the other one too. And I'm gonna take it off my foot um, because it's very awkward to hold your foot up in the air. So um, 
I think one thing that did come out the same coincidentally was the heel, the heel flap and um, yeah, the heel flap and heel turn came out the same. So a very easy pattern. It's a four row repeat, if I remember right, four stitch, four row uh, repeat. Could be five rows. I'm thinking it's five rows. Um, so fun pattern, makes the little quilty blocks. Um, I guess I sort of thought it, it matched this sweater. Not that anyone cares. I mean, my socks are on my feet and either inside my slippers or inside uh, the boots or shoes that I'm wearing. It's boot season around here. So I have a pair of cowboy boots that I wear out a lot um, that I bought in Northeast Oregon. Uh, mm, it's been a few years. Um, I bought them for myself for a birthday present. So I like wearing boots in the winter. They keep my feet dry when it's raining, which it does quite a bit here in the Pacific Northwest. Although today it's just kind of cloudy and nice and a lovely fall day. So what I want to talk about um, today is kind of an, a knitting strategy that I heard on Knitty Natty, Love and Stitches. I'm not sure if you're familiar with her podcast, I'm a fairly new viewer. Um, I just kept seeing other podcasters, knitting podcasters refer to her. So um, I checked her out and I really like her, her content. Um, I like her spirit. Um, and one of the things that she suggested is just to kind of get through your, your whips, your works in progress, is to um, set aside, she had eight different strategies in a recent episode uh, on how to do that. And I'm going to try, so I've set aside about three hours, it'll be less than three hours by the time I get finished with this uh, segment of the knitting part of um, my episode. Um, and I'm going to try it. I'm going to pull out all my whips and see. I'm going to listen to different podcasts. I'll probably watch different YouTube channels. Anything from, you know, 15 minute Arnie, Arnie and Carlos, their um, stocking knit along that I'm not participating in, um, to maybe a much longer um, episode. Shannon makes sometimes does 45 minutes to an hour. I'm trying to think of other programs that I watch that are bakery bears. I mean, theirs are usually two hour episodes, but I'm all caught up with them. And then also fruity knitting is 90 minutes and I'm caught up with their episodes as well. So that's the strategy I'm going to use. Um, and at the end of the three hours and after I have my trainer's lesson with Braggy, I'll give you an update on that and then hopefully upload this podcast for your enjoyment. So stay tuned. Thank you. Hi everyone, welcome to, what, part two, chapter two of uh, the knitting and horsing segment. I'm not sure what to call this. Um, I just came in the house from having a, a lesson with my trainer, with Braggy, and I'm really happy to, to report that um, Braggy got in the trailer, he was comfortable, in there as much as he can be. And um, Megan was able to shut the divider and back away. So the way that we did this is that I was at the front of the, the trailer um, where his nose would be and um, standing on a step stool so I could um, kind of help direct him and give him cookies when he earned them. Um, and then, so we've been working on closing the, the divider for quite a long time now. And, um, you know, basically with her standing there with him. So it was a little bit confusing for him when she started to like kind of move down his body, like towards the back of the trailer to exit. Um, um, but with having me up there and having him focus his attention on me, plus he had his emotional support cone, um, traffic cone there as well and a bucket of snacks so that um, he pretty much had everything he needed he could touch his cone and self-reward by digging and 
or um, if he was looking to me with his, his head straight, which he would have to given my position, he also got a cookie for that. And that way Megan was able to just kind of work her way down his body and shut the divider. And he backed into it a couple times, um, like, you know, really like I'm not feeling good about this, but it, I asked him to come forward either just by offering him my hand or just, just giving him just very gentle tug on the lead rope and he came forward and um, so he did really good. And then the next step was for Megan to open the divider and then uh, my job was just to not hold him in but to keep his head straight so that he backed out rather than turned around and uh, rushed out in a panic. So that went really well. She opened the divider, he, you know, after he stopped leaning on it and um, and then he started backing out. I kept his head straight and he backed out with intention, but he didn't panic. So, and then she was just able to um, catch him before he fully left the trailer and just, you know, hung out with him with his front feet in the trailer. And then we called that the day. So he got to go graze and for a little bit and he went immediately to grazing, which was also a really nice um, thing rather than standing out in the yard, like looking for things to be upset about and kind of, you know, starting to pace. Uh, he didn't do that at all. So he went to grazing. He had a nice big um, release of breath. That's when they make that sound. So that was pretty awesome. So that was the horse stuff. Um, after I took him out to the barn, Odin was standing at the round pen acting like he wanted to go in and do some stuff. So we did. He and I went in there and we just walked over some poles, trotted over some poles. Uh, he trotted over, I was standing in the middle. Um, and then just worked on some lateral movements too, just to help him with foot placement and with his, his just kind of body position and flexibility. So great day. So let's get back to the knitting. I want to report back on my experiment with kind of working on my whips with uh, my works in progress with, um, you know, like changing a podcast or like when po one podcast ended, then I would end that project and go to the next one. Quite honestly, it didn't work that well. Um, I wanted to finish the color work section. I was on the sweater that I'm going to show you in a second. And I also wanted to show you the finished uh, podster mitts, which um, I'm going to show you those first. So this is a bag, yay, horse bag, uh, made by my mom. Um, so I thought I was all finished, and then I discovered that the right mitt, um, so this one goes on the right hand, is a different length than the left mitt. So, um, it's just, maybe this is a better way to show it. So basically where the fingers end on the left mitt, the right ones kind of begin. So I'm going to have Randy try them on, see which one he likes, and then rip, um, one out. I, you know, it may not make that big of a difference when he's wearing them. I don't know. So, um, I mean, quite honestly, on, and these are too big for me because Randy's hands are bigger. Um, I could also just add more finger. So I'll see what he says. So this is not technically a finished object, I am sad to say. Um, but as you can tell by the way that I am dressed right now, that it, it warmed up quite a bit. So not quite for woolly, uh, bicycling with woolly mitts. And that's the whole idea of these is that these have... Um, they're convertible, so um, you know you can put the, the thumb, cover up your thumb, um, and then cover up your fingers if you need more, more mitt. So that's the idea. So I'll keep you posted on this. So I, darn it, it's not a finished object. Oh well. So the other project, and I'm also working on the gift knit um, that I'm not going to show, and I didn't work on that at all today. Probably work on that while I'm uh, uploading this podcast. 
Um, but what, but what I did work on was my um, Nay sweater. So this is this pattern by Caitlin Hunter. So pretty cool horse motif. Can you see that okay? So, whoops. Yeah, it's hard to tell. Um, so what, what I want to point out is that the sleeve motif. Um, so I'm done with the body. No, the body's on this side. Um, the sleeve motif is this just kind of, I mean, it's color work, obviously, but it, it's kind of plain. And I got this nifty book of more um, patterns. So there is one in there called Tiny Pony. So it's, it's almost the same stitch count as the chart for the sleeve. So I modified it a little bit, um, and I have this nifty book that has, um, I'm not going to show you the pattern because this is a paid for pattern, but I do want to show you the nifty book. Um, it's, it's not quite graph paper, but you can definitely make graph. It's like this dotted paper. And this is an otter, I'm probably not going to pronounce this correctly, otter Um, I think it's a German company. It has vegan leather, if that's... Um, important to you. Um, it's more important to me these days. Um, so I'm happy to have products that um, support sustainability and don't necessarily use animal products. So let me show you. I can't exactly remember where I left off. I think I had the body done last time. Um, so I have the body and the neck done. I decreased quite a bit um, in the neck, so it, it's kind of the back is this kind of funny decreases in the ribbing, but you know what? I don't care. It's uh, it's in the back. <laughs> so um, this is what it looks like, and this is the sleeve. So I started with the the pattern on the sleeve, and quite honestly, I made a mistake on the first color work round, and I used um, this color instead of the main contrast color, which is this variegated um, spin cycle yarn. But the rest of it I did in um, the spin cycle yarn. And then this is where I started doing the tiny pony. So I think this row is pretty, pretty good. So, oh, one of the cats is playing with, um, you know the thing, um, the little cap that goes over the bolt on your, on your toilet that bolts the toilet to the floor? So the cats love to play with those. So if you hear that, um, they're basically playing hockey with it. So you know, anyway, I want to show you my tiny pony. Um, so I think this is going to be more fun. Um, so let me know what you think. And I'm also experimenting using the Stitch Dictionary patterns um, in, in rather than using regular, um, you know, the prescribed pattern all the time. I also got another fun, speaking of that, another fun new book today, The Doodle Directory by um, Pacific Knits Co., who is a local yarn designer. Uh, she is based out of Seattle, which is not too far from where I live. And um, she also has some interesting motifs that I'm kind of want to explore for um, working into my, my knitting. Both of these books have some patterns, um, like sweater and cowl and mitts and socks. So you may be seeing that in the coming days. Um, okay, I'm looking at my collar uh, where I did the decreases and don't really like it, but I can sew it together and it's going to look okay. So um, yeah, so this is the sweater. I'm looking forward to wearing it. The yarn I think I've talked about before, this is Knit Picks. Um, so hold it up by the shoulders. Knit Picks is the main, it's squirrel gray or squirrel heather, something like that. The um, maroon burgundy color is a Barocco color, DK weight. And then the spin cycle is actually a worsted weight, but it, it knits more like DK. And uh, it, I don't remember what the color weight is, but I can show you what it looks like. This is what the, the ball looks like. So very, you know, maroons and blues and pinks. 
So looking forward to that. Um, I suspect it's gonna be a little bit before I have that as a finished object, uh, hopefully by December 1st, because I would really like to start advent knitting then. And, um, you know, actually I'd like to start working on Christmas knitting now so that I can knit, uh, or so I can wear something. Oh, I wanna show you the book. Or the, this is what the, This is what the the box looks like. I can really. So it's www.otterjami.com is the website, and that um, that was a resource from Kay Jones. Um, so the other works in progress. I don't really have anything to report. Um, I have my scrappy sock somewhere. I think it's in a different bag. I'm almost done with the first one, but that has just been, I've been working on that on, on um, Scrappy Sunday. So uh, I don't have much to report on that. So I think that is going to end um, the knitting section. You know, sorry, this is, you know, kind of cryptic in that it's like, yeah, I'm doing some gift knitting and I can't show you. So. Um, I promise, and I'm not making a ton of progress on it. I'm working a little bit on it every, pretty much every day, at least for a little bit. So stay tuned for the Chili Podsters um, mitts. That it was, a, I believe it was a free pattern and it is by uh, Glenna C. And it uses Barocco Ultra Alpaca. So it, it was very likely a Barocco pattern. Um, and the website is glennaknits.com. G-L-E-N-N-A-K-N-I-T-S.com. So I'm not exactly sure where I found this. Probably on Ravelry. So it was a big week. Um, so we had the time change last Sunday. So we have a little bit more daylight in the morning. Um, but it does get dark around 5 p.m. here, um, and it's just going to get darker until the sun sets. I think at 4.15 is the earliest it sets, and uh, the sun rises like after 8 a.m., so we only have like 8 hours and 15 minutes of daylight um, in the coming weeks. Um, I don't mind. It's a cozy season for me, and as I keep saying, it's a season. Uh, we have seasons of light here. Um, there was also the election. Uh, I'm not going to talk very much about that. I will say I live in a very blue state and I am very progressive minded. So the outcome was very disappointing to me. Um, I not, and I guess I just feeling a little bit bewildered on the basis and look forward to some of the articles that are coming out, like from the New York Times, uh, you know, on just the analysis of of what the, you know, the people who are voting, uh, who did vote um, that way, um, came to their decision, um, curious about it. Um, I, I know, I'm aware that there are a lot of people who are, the focus of Project 2025. And if you are interested in Project 2025, a really way digestible way to read it is um, a group of graphic designers um, did kind of like a comic explaining each section of it, which I found very helpful, much more um, easy to understand than trying to read the actual document itself. Um, I think they did a really good job on explaining what it all means. Um, so there are, um, I think the biggest concerns for me are costs, um, expecting increased costs in medicine. Um, there's going to be, if, if this, these projects go through, there's going to be more government in, in interference in your healthcare, um, choices, which I think that is absolutely incorrect. I think, um, healthcare choices should be made between you and your doctor. Um, and not based on capitalism, market um, forces, and, and um, really even any other sort of 
or even religious beliefs, you know, not for the general population. That's my personal feeling. Um, you know, feel free to comment if, if you want. Um, I'm mostly curious on what I know that I'm aware that it's very difficult for um, elections to be won um, by the incumbent when there's inflation. If inflation is very complex and not really the result of, I think it has more to do with global factors than it does like who happens to be sitting in the president's seat at the time. So that's a little bit dis disappointing and short-sighted as well. But I understand that's a reality that people have to face every day. I will say living in the Pacific Northwest, I feel fairly insulated from um, a lot of the policies that uh, may be a result of this election. So um, I'm going to end the um, episode on that note, somewhat, you know, not particularly cheerful note, but I will include some footage from some writing I did yesterday. So hopefully that will um, put us all in a better frame of mind. Take care. Yeah.
not bad. Yeah, that's not bad. You want to try it again? Okay, walk on. Good boy. 